Political corruption has become almost a cottage industry in Illinois. Two of the last three governors went to jail. The most recent case is that of former Governor Rod Blagojevich. In the current post-Blagojevich climate, a real battle is underway to bring dignity and respect back to the state's top job. This week, five of the six Republican candidates are debating one another, hoping to land the Republican nomination to run for governor. One candidate that's gaining momentum and is seen as the Tea Party candidate, the candidate in the race, who's also the target of a real down-and-dirty Chicago machine-style attack, is my next guest, Adam Andrzejewski. Adam, welcome to Freedom Watch. Great to be on your show, Judge. Great Thank to you. be here. Thank you. I'm so one tell us what's happening, running... what's happening in Chicago, and how does it look for you, lover of the Constitution that you are, to gain the Republican nomination for governor of that state? Well, it's a, a unique election cycle. The establishment in this state is not oftentimes confused, but this time I'm one outsider running against five insiders. So that insider vote is all split up. It's geographically split up as well. So the odds are real good. I moved the polls in the last four days by 4%. We're only down eight points off the lead. And if I win this race, Judge, the Illinois Republican Party will stand for real Republican reform. And we got to go back probably previous to 20 years before it has stood for reform. You know, I, I, I am so uh, privileged to have on this show folks like you from all over the country who are running for a, a, the, an office in the government, frequently in the Republican primary, but not always, embracing the values of the primacy of the individual, the concept of limited government, the idea of natural rights, the, the, the principles uh, of the free market. And they all tell me that these ideas Absolutely. resonate with rank and file Republicans, but not always with the leadership of the Republican Party. Question, are you running into that resistance from the leadership in Illinois as well? Well, it's printed on my campaign materials, Judge Napolitano, that the business as usual politicians, they're doing everything they can to stop my campaign from succeeding. But in this election cycle, it's all about we the people. It's all about the grassroots and the momentum for principles and values. I think the people get it in this cycle, and the business as usual folks, they can't stop us. I am one man running against the establishment, an establishment that has been there. My five opponents, my five insider opponents, have a hundred years of Illinois political experience between them. And I ask only one question on the campaign trail. How many of you think Illinois is running well? Wow. And in 11 months on the trail, 50,000 miles on my campaign truck, not one single person has raised their hand. Somehow so this I, is a unique election cycle. We can win this race. Somehow I am not surprised. We are chatting with Adam Andrzejewski, who's running as a constitutional Republican, if I may. Uh, for the Republican nomination for governor in Illinois. What, what are the issues that are, are resonating uh, with the voters in Illinois? We all know about the corruption problem. I mean, your question is a, is a brilliant one. No one in their right mind could possibly conclude that Illinois is being run properly. But what hot-button issues are, do you find are resonating well with the folks whose votes, votes you're seeking in the Republican primary? Well, I'm, Judge, I'm actually running on two executive orders. Because of the weakness of my party, we have the fewest numbers of Republicans in the General Assembly, uh, in the Senate, going back to the Civil War, and in the House, we're one seat shy of being in the super minority there as well. So a Republican governor has got to use his executive power in, underneath the Illinois Constitution to be a check on this very liberal Chicago dominated legislature. And I will. So the two executive orders that I'm running on are our nonpartisan good government stuff. It's the first one is every dime online in real time, putting online banking for state government into place. We have it at home. We need to open up the books of Springfield. We all want tax cuts. Tax cuts can't happen until we get spending cuts. Spending cuts in Illinois need to be proven, and the proof starts with just purely and simply being able to see it. So I'll open up from the top of the appropriation all the way down into the lower regions, the subcontractor level, where you and I know the real corruption exists. Does and the, I'm also the, running on a second executive order. Well, before we get to the second executive order, the Democrats will go crazy. If a Republican governor puts online <laughs> every nickel and dime of tax dollars that they've been spending and wasting, that will cause almost a revolution among the voters if you succeed in doing that. 
Absolutely. Uh, you get it, I get it, and I think the people of Illinois get it. We need pushback, we need leadership. It starts with the governorship and the executive power of that office on good government principles. I'll wield that, that power on behalf of the people of Illinois. What is the other executive order or the other principle that you're running on that you could do alone as the governor without needing the uh, support or the vote of a democratically controlled legislature? Well, it's a top to bottom forensic audit of state spending. It is the toughest policy in this race, Judge. A forensic audit, as you know, it's a deep audit, evidentiary. It follows the money and it holds up in court. So when the leading product that Illinois manufactures is corruption, this not only will save us three to five billion dollars worth of misspending, but it'll also go a long way toward ending our number one manufactured product, and that's corruption at the state level. You know, it used to be now Kansas. It used to be that Democrats argued in favor of transparency and in favor of the openness of government. But you are suggesting, Adam, and I think this is wonderful, that not only would you open up so everybody can see the government's bank accounts, but you're suggesting that the government itself would be audited so people can see how money in the past has been spent. That's right, Judge. Uh, uh, how did we catch Al Capone? We, have, uh, we followed the money. We followed the we money. We need to we, follow the money on this. We, we caught him on income we need tax to follow invasion. The 55. invasion. I'm sorry for the, for the delay in the time. Uh, before I let you go, I understand that a certain Nobel Peace Prize winner is going to campaign for you, and I don't mean the current occupant of the White House. Tell us who that will be. <laughs> Well, there was a guy back in 1983 that actually earned the Nobel Peace Prize, and his name's Lech Walesa, former president of Poland, founder of Solidarity. He's going to be on the turf Friday. Two fundraisers for me right here in Chicago. And the big news uh, that I'll break on your show, Judge Napolitano, is he's actually coming to a Tea Party event at Federal Plaza, downtown Chicago, where the Tea Party groups from around Illinois are going to host Lech Valenza and also another co-founder of Solidarity, Miroslav Gill. Both of those guys, the co-founders of Solidarność, are going to come to a Tea Party at 2.30 right in the heart of Chicago. Uh, and I think I, it's a national story. My only regret is that I can't be there with you. Adam Andrzejewski, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining <laughs> us on Freedom Watch. Thank you.